Good morning everybody, just taking out for his little walk, you can see it's a beautiful day, some of the blossoms out, it's a bit muddy underfoot but still such a beautiful morning for a walk, so we will catch up with you later on. <coughs> Hi Stitchy friends, welcome back to Bumble Stitches. This is a floss tube video about cross stitching and my name's Nicola. If you're a new subscriber, a big warm welcome. If you've subscribed since the last video, a big warm welcome to you. And of course, if you are one of my returning Stitchy friends, then it's lovely to see you again today. I'm in the conservatory, as you can see, it's very bright and sunny. It's actually quite warm in here. I'm normally sitting just over there in the other side of the conservatory but I'm on the couch today because it's not a very nice view. The people next door um, are having some building work done and there's a nice view of some scaffolding just peeping up over the fence so I thought we'd um, have a little change of aspect today and it'd be quite nice to sit and have a little comfy chat with you on the sofa here. So I hope you've all been keeping well since I saw you last. Um, it has been a while and to be honest with you throughout the whole of March um, it was either myself or Justin that were ill we really had a, a month of it um, just one thing after another and just really feeling sorry for ourselves nothing serious but just feeling generally poorly and groggy and miserable and just keeping ourselves hidden away here at home and then at the beginning of April um, Alfie went and had his little boy operation and he had a very nasty reaction to the painkillers that the vet gave him and then proceeded to have um, yeah, quite a lot of discomfort and unpleasant symptoms. But I'm happy to report that we are all well again, which is a relief because as I said, it just gets a little bit tedious after a while when nobody feels well. We were kind of all doing it in rotation. But Alfie's back in fine form. I would have popped um, a little bit of our walk this morning at the beginning of this video. And he is now two weeks on from his operation and healed up nicely. And yeah, back to his normal cheeky self. Um, stitching wise, quite a few bits and pieces have got done. I've got a couple of finished objects, um, a couple of FFOs to show you and lots of whips and quite a few bits of haul and um, some of my market goodies came through so that was lovely. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to quickly mention was if you are a regular viewer and you remember at the beginning of the year I offered out some uh, a couple of pieces or it may have been last year I can't remember I offered up a couple of pieces um, of some whips that I was not going to finish for adoption and one of those pieces was Christmas Wishes by Little Dove Designs and it was adopted by Sue in Jersey and Sue actually completed the um, the piece 
had it framed and entered it for a show um, on Jersey where she lives in the Channel Islands and it won a platinum prize. I'll pop a picture in here so you can see and Sue very kindly included my name on the entry so thank you Sue and thank you for finishing it and well done because it was your um, getting it finished and getting it so fully finished so nicely um, that really made it so that was really nice to see that. Other than that, I think I will probably just crack on with today's episode and share some of the things that I've been up to with you. So without further ado, and this has been a very long time in the making, it is the Prim Stitch Series by Laurie Holt. And as you can see, we have a finish. So here it is in its entirety. I'll see if I get it all and just give you a slow you'll notice the angel and the farmer don't have eyes and as I get down to the bottom you'll also notice the cat doesn't have eyes or whiskers and I think the cat will definitely get whiskers but I don't know if the farmer and the angel will actually get eyes the pattern calls for um, French knots which are not my favourite thing. Well, I don't mind doing them, but I'm just not always happy with the results that I get. So I might just leave them sort of as suggestions of faces. They've got their little rosy cheeks. Um, I may leave it at that, but I'm so happy to have finally finished this piece. Um, it has been about 18 months um, as a whip and it's really lovely to have got it done. This border all the way around the edge was a killer at the end. I really wish I'd kept up with it as I was doing the blocks um, to make it you know, much easier at the end, but that's me. I don't really like doing borders and I left it and left it and left it. And then all the fun stuff was done and I just had loads and loads of borders to do. I did to do some of it stitched in hand, which um, made it go a little bit quicker. But there she is, all completed. Sorry about the sun creeping through there. And it's quite a big piece. I stitched it on 25 count Lugana using the called for Orifloss. And now all that's left to do is to FFO it. And I did mention before that my plan is to make it into a wall hanging. And I've got this um, little lorry Holt flea market charm pack now i know that the cross stitch is prim from the prim series and there is a fabric line to go with that but i don't have any um prim fabric so i do have this flea market bundle here i'm going to try and do a little flick through of some of the colors and of course with laurie's um color palette going right through lots of her lines I think these will work out well there's some um, if I can flick through to it which I can't get to the some of the the browns for example and of course the lovely yellows and green and blues so I think I can make it work so my plan is to get the piece um, do a hem probably um, just press it over and hand stitch it I don't know I haven't really thought about the finer points but ultimately I'd like to make from the um, the charm squares two and a half inch squares of border that goes all the way around and then I'm going to sort of tie quilt it with some little buttons that I've got at the intersections and put some sort of hanger so that I can put a rod through the back and hang it on the wall. So that's the plan. So I'll need to um, get my maths head on and do some accurate measurements to try and make that work. Of course, the um, the blocks of the quilting might need to be adjusted, but I'm sure with a little bit of thought, I can make this work. So, but the main thing is that the cross stitch is finished. I'm very, very happy about that. So that is my prim stitch series. And of course, now that I've completed it, let me just pop it over there so it doesn't get too crumpled. Um, now that I've completed it, it means that I can, because I was using, as I mentioned, the Orifloss 
collection um, which are these and I was doing another project with these which was the prim and proper which I'll show you in just a second but then I stopped because I thought hang on I need to really make sure I've got enough floss here to complete prim stitch series and it was close it was really close so in the end um, as you can see I do have a couple of empty spools here one was the um, cloud colorway and I did have to actually substitute a little bit of DMC 3865 into my piece to finish it but I don't think you would even notice um, that it was there and I did also um, fully use one of the spools which is the pebble um, which is the main colour in the border so the other one that's a little bit close to empty is the raisin there but the rest of the spools there's plenty on and I think I'm going to be alright to do prim and proper with these and in actual fact I, now that I um, have actually had a look at how far I got on prim and proper which I will show you now and before I forget before I forget um, once I've fully finished this I do have all 12 of the prim stitch series patterns here and I will be offering these as a giveaway so that will be coming up um, as soon as I've FFO the piece but yeah if I just show you where I got to on prim and proper now I know this isn't I'm just going off on a tangent from where I was so this is prim and proper um, it was an it's over so pattern designed by Laurie Holt and it uses exactly the same collection of flosses and I was merrily stitching away on it let me find it I'm putting stuff everywhere as usual let me show you where I got to on it and you'll see Let's pop it on my board. Okay, so that's how far I got with prim and proper. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of the raisin colourway, the dark brown, and there is some of the cloud as well. Now the cloud I'm quite happy to substitute again with 3865. And the DMC equivalent that Laurie gives for the raisin is DMC 08 which I have here but and I don't know if you're going to be able to tell in this light if I pop that over it's difficult to tell on camera but it is a little bit lighter so now I have the dilemma do I unpick all the dark brown from this I'm not really fancying that idea very much and then just stitch with the DMC 08 or do I try and find a single spool um, of the raisin Orifloss and I've had a little look online I can't see anywhere here in the UK that sells single spools I might have to have another look on So Hot UK but when I was looking for a, a replacement uh, spool of the cloud I couldn't find any so I will have to have another look but yeah, case in point, if I had have completed this, I definitely would have run out of some of the flosses that I needed for Prim Stitch Series. So we will see. I mean, obviously I do have a little of the, um, the raisin left on the spool, but I don't think I've got enough to get away with completing that. So that's a little problem to worry about on another day. I just thought it was interesting to see that if I hadn't have gone on with this project that I would have had enough to do um, Prim Stitch Series. So I'll pop this to one side and move these fat quarters, uh, charm squares out of the way. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to share with you is a fully finished object and it is something wicked by Lardy Da, totally unseasonal, lovely warm sunny spring day and I'm showing you a Halloween finish but I stitched this um, back around Halloween time last year but didn't get it finished in time and I absolutely love this design. This was a bit of a unicorn for me and the chart which as I mentioned is by Lardy Da was sent to me by a lovely viewer Laurie in California and I really enjoyed stitching it. It's on a 36 count linen. I think it's 
Vintage Country Mocha by Zweigart in DMC flosses as called for on the pattern and with some cobweb fabric on the back. I do have some black Lady Dot Creates chenille which I'm considering putting around the edge. But how fun is that? I really, really love it. I've stuffed it with um, a combination of um, walnut shells and polyfill. And it's given a nice, it's got enough of a squish to it, but I've managed to get the polyfill right in the corners just to give it that nice shape. So I was really pleased to get that done. Another FFO, it's not a cross stitch FFO, it's a sewing FFO, is, um, something that I'm really thrilled with and this is my tomato stack and I've done this as part of my tomato stitch up sal I know it's not cross stitch but it's still tomatoes and I love it and really thoroughly enjoyed making this one afternoon um, it was one afternoon when I was feeling a little bit better and Justin was quite poorly and was having a nap so I retreated to the sewing room and just made this one afternoon. Now this is a free tutorial by Celeste of Celeste Creates and she does have a video which I will, um, I'll pop a link to her channel down below. And Celeste's instructions, she gives you a template for the, um, the leaves and for the strawberry and you can download those. She gives you all the dimensions that you need to cut your tomatoes and the video of how to make it is just so easy to follow I just kept pausing when I needed to watching a bit more of Celeste explaining how to do the next step and I ended up with this gorgeous stack of tomatoes with the strawberry and I was thrilled with it because I didn't think I'd be able to get it looking quite as nice as hers but I'm really really pleased it's got the, um, the button at the bottom and the button on the top a little button on the strawberry and I popped some little pins little red pins that were in my advent from um, my friend Paula last year so that is a little fun piece and yeah if you've got some scraps of red and green fabric and you fancy making one she also gives she's got a, um, a tutorial as well for just making one tomato um, but so so cute so pretty so that was great fun to make. And my final um, finished piece, not FFO'd because I'll explain why. And if I pop it on the board, as part of my tomato stitch up sow that I mentioned last episode, and I've got lots of new tomato goodies to share in my haul, I've been stitching again from Keeper of the Pins which you're probably familiar with from Brenda Gervais with the needle and thread. And I have completed the stitching for this one, the Stitchy Bird. And I'll see if I can show you an image before I show you my... Uh, not really very clearly. There's not a big picture. There's one there. And all I need to do with this guy is get some little beads to sew on the top of the pins to make them look like glass pins. So I hope you can see that clearly. And what I have done is I'm going to work through in the order that the patterns appear in the book. So the next one is going to be, my soul is fed with needle and thread, which is the one on the back. And I'm gonna try and get them all on this piece of linen. I've got this folded in half. So I've just given myself enough space to um, cut and I just popped the M. I finished this last night and I thought I'll just pop the M in so I know where the spacing is. Now this linen is beautiful. It's a 36 count and it's from my lovely friend Paula at Eva Faith um, on Etsy. I can't tell you what the colourway is um, because I normally keep the little tag on that Paula puts on but somebody was helping me stitch and he decided that he desperately needed to pull the tag off and then promptly ate it. So Alfie knows the secret of the colourway. Um, 
but it is beautiful and as I said I'm hoping to be able to get all um, six of the charts on this piece of linen they're quite small but it's got such lovely mottling and I do love the colourway even though it does remain a mystery now I don't think it was catkin Paula might remember but it is beautiful and I'm looking forward to getting some more of those done so that's going back into my lovely tomato bag from um, Paula at so Be Pauline sorry at Sobe bags I'll pop that one away okay I'm gonna have a little sip of my water it's really warm in here today but it's nice that it's actually finally stopped raining we've had huge amount of rain here today I know when I spoke with Paula this morning um, she's probably about 150 miles away from me um, I guess and it was raining there so it just shows even in a relatively small country I say that compared to um, our American friends it's still really changeable but the weather today is just beautiful okay let's have a look at some more whips and the next one up is actually a new star I'm going to try and find the right bag that I'm keeping this in so I can give you some details and the print that I've got of this chart is not actually that great so I'll do my best to and it's French so get ready for some funky pronunciation and my printer went funny all at the same time so this is the chart that I'm stitching really really pretty and I got it on Etsy and it is called La Nuit to le Marque Sans Gris and I think it's roughly translates as like everything looks grey at night something like that all the colours are sort of grey at night I'll pop in a picture as well um, if I can find one of the actual finished stitched model it is super super pretty and I am stitching mine on some gorgeous linen that's from West Green Loft from Vicky and I just made a small start I'm doing it all in DMC 3866 so you can see just a tiny start there and this is a 36 count West Green Loft linen and uh, let me show you the label which I have got here somewhere in the corner here we go and it's in the colorway sleepy hollow which is this beautiful soft gray which I think lends itself really well to this design so that was a little cheeky start and I didn't even intend to I was just pottering around looking at some bits and pieces um, in my stash and suddenly decided that I absolutely needed to start that that very evening and pulled out some floss I did start actually um, I started with some sulky thread I didn't actually like it um, I don't know if it's because is this a, yeah it's 36 count I don't know it just my stitches looked really awful, really messy and untidy with this. I know lots of people really love Sulky and it may be that it just wasn't the right linen or maybe because sometimes stitching in sort of white or off-white um, is not the kindest to your stitches as other colours. Whatever the combination, it just didn't look right so I opted for one strand of DMC. So that was a new start for me. And in other whips, we have a poor little bunny that didn't quite make it to Easter. And this one is Mrs. Cottontail by Brenda Gervais. And I got as far as getting the outline of her dress and apron. And then Easter was upon us and you know how it goes best laid plans let me just quickly show you the chart again and I'm stitching this in 
a variation um, of my own flosses that I just pulled together that I thought would work well and try to match them to the colours on the chart. And there she is, Madam Cottontail. I'm not going to make it into the little pocket bag, little pocket thing. I'll probably just make it into a little pillow. So she's going to probably have to go away now. But Easter and spring has gone. But I think the majority of that one's done, so it won't take too much when I pick it up again next year. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to share with you, do you know what, I'm going to have a little interlude now and do the giveaway winners from last episode before I carry on with my whips, just to mix things up a little bit. Um, so there were two giveaways, lots of lovely comments, thank you for those. And I'd mentioned spring as a theme and support, which was the breast cancer support group um, goodies from Fat Quarter Shop. So the winner of the spring designs, which were these two charts here, is Leanne Dyson. So congratulations, Leanne. I don't know why I'm showing you the sticky note. I'll pop your name up on the screen here. So that's Leanne Dyson. So if you can drop me an email, um, my email is down below in the description box and let me know your address and I'll get these off to you. And the winner of the support group, which comprised the cross stitch chart, the quilt pattern, and the needle minder is Nancy Bunt. So Nancy, congratulations to you. Again, please drop me an email and I will get these off to you once I have your address. So congratulations to our winners. Okay, so back to the whips and what's next? Now this was a start that I did on my birthday and I'm going to be completely honest, I can't remember if I have done anything since my last floss tube, but I think I may have done a few letters on Anne Logan. So let me just pop her up so you can see. I know I was watching um, Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher. She's stitching Anne as well. And it's such a pretty design. I think I may have just had the top bit done last time and I've added the letters. If you've seen this before, just humour me and pretend you haven't. But such a pretty design. This is from Christina at Whilst Iris Naps. I'm stitching mine on a 36 count fibre on a whim in the colour Parchment which is perfect for this chart. And I'm stitching it on or with all the cord for, which is Weeks Dye Works. And I'll show you the printed, this is a PDF that I've downloaded from Christina's website. And I can't wait to get down to this section with all the eyelets, I really love stitching eyelets. I haven't done many, I've done a few on Anniversaries of the Heart. Um, but here are all the gorgeous Weeks Dye Work flosses. So that's Anne Logan. She needs a little bit more love, I think, does Anne? And then we will move on to my next work in progress which is the Bountiful Sow by Fat Quarter Shop. And this is their annual charity um, stitch along for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Let me just grab my bag with the goodies in that I'm using. And excuse the crumpling. This is the, um, the Bountiful bag. It's a big bag because it was designed to hold um, if you were doing the quilts. It's a quilt along and stitch along. It's a nice big bag. My printout has got a little bit crunkled, but you've probably seen this if you watch Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. So that is what it's going to look like. And I was given the opportunity to choose my own fabric and a floss. The floss is all the called for classic colour works. And look at those beautiful colours. 
They look gorgeous in the sunshine. Really, really pretty. And the lovely little box that they come in. And I've just kept the little colour chart inside there. And so far, my progress is that I have done the outside border, which was part one. And I'm just working on the first uh, part two, which is the first sort of motif. And I'm stitching this on, I have completely blanked on the fabric that I'm stitching this on. And I don't think I've got the other piece in here. I will pop it along the bottom, but it is a 32 count, um, I believe it's a Zweigart, and it's this gingham check, which I think is working really well with these bright colours. So it's not too late to join in if you want to join this stitch along. I'll put the hashtag along the bottom. And for a donation to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, you can get started on this gorgeous design. And I was thinking, I like to, I tend to sort of muse on what I'm going to do with my pieces when they're finished. I like to have some idea of how I'm going to FFO it. And I was thinking, well, I don't really know, is this going to go with, where is it going to go? Is it too big to be a pillow? Is it, what am I going to do with it? And I think I'm going to make a project bag with this one when it's done, because it's really cheery. The fabric is a gorgeous gingham, and I just think it will make a really pretty summery project bag when it's done. That is the plan at the moment. Of course, that might change, but I think it will make a really pretty project bag. So that is bountiful. And there are some really lovely stitch alongs coming up with Fat Quarter Shop. So if you haven't already seen um, the latest floss tube, do check that out and keep your eyes peeled for some lovely stitch alongs coming up throughout the next few months. Right, let me pop this back. I'm trying not to make too much of a mayhem uh, mess in here. Now my prim stitch series that I showed you that's all complete was my car stitching and I stitch every lunchtime on my lunch break from work. I sort of have my sandwich or whatever and then I sit, have a little bit of time out um, from the office and do a little bit of stitching. And now I can't take my light with me and my magnifier so I like to have something a little bit bigger so that I can actually see it. So it needs to be sort of 28 count, mm, 32 is a bit of a push, um, but 28 count is perfect. So I thought, well, what am I going to stitch on now that Prim is done? I really missed it. I'd been my lunchtime partner for quite a while. And I thought, I know, this board keeps falling down. I'm going to get um, Real Comfort out by Modern Folk Embroidery. So I pulled this one out and started working on this again i've done exactly half of it so i have just done the um i think i've done that date i've just done a little bit extra along the top and the line following the board around because i pulled this out in my whip parade and said oh i wasn't sure what i was going to do was i going to finish it, it was going to be really big because this has got the section with the alphabet along the bottom a double alphabet. I was watching So Me Sarah this morning and Sarah has just finished hers and it's beautiful. I think she's done it on a much smaller count of fabric than I have. This is something that I started when I first got back to cross stitch and my eyes weren't really trained and this was as much as I could manage to see. Um, but yes, that's the extra section there with the alphabet but I'm only working it up until the bottom of the houses. And somebody in the comments after my whip parade said, why don't you make it into, um, just stitch the top bit and make it into a pillow. And I thought that is a brilliant idea. And I showed at the time, I've got this perfect piece of fabric, just about big enough. This is Rifle Paper Company fabric from their Wildwood range. And I'm gonna use that for the backing of the pillow when it's done. I'm going to get some really nice 
fancy tassels to go on the corners of the um, the pillow when it's done. So I think it will look really, really nice. I'm stitching this all in DMC 817, which is a very dark charcoal grey. And the linen, as I said, is 28 count. I cannot remember the colourway. It is a Zweigart linen, but I'm not sure of the colourway. And it was interesting, actually, because when I watched Sarah this morning, um, she's changed the dates on hers because I started as per the pattern and it should be 1817 to 2017 because this was designed to commemorate um, 200 years since Jane Austen's death. She was born in 1775 and died in 1817. Not much of a life, is it? But she got a lot done in her shortish um, life. But I'm going to do exactly what Sarah did and I'm going to pick this out and replace it with 1775 and do the 1817 here. So it's her date of birth to the date of her death and get that one finished. And I've been having a little practice with stitching in hand on this one as well. Um, I find that if I'm doing just like big blocks or sort of straight lines of border, then I can stitch in hand. I can only stitch in hand if I'm stitching from right to left though. I cannot go the other way. Um, so I can go from right to left and I can go from bottom to top, but I can't do anything else other than that. Any twiddly bits, I have to go back to my hoop. But it's been a really lovely stitch at lunch times. And it just means that it gets a little bit of work on it every day or sort of Monday to Friday. And what I did with Prim, and which I'll probably do the same with this, is when I feel that I'm getting really close to a finish, then I'll bring it in to the house and it will say and get a little bit of extra stitching on it. So that is what I have been up to with my stitching. So not as much as I would like. As I said, there's been, there are a few sort of poorly days. There are quite a few days when I've not actually felt like stitching. There have been days when Alfie hasn't felt like me stitching and when he was poorly, just sitting and sort of, you know, cuddling him. And yeah, but it's not a race, is it? And it's really nice just to have a little bit of progress on, on lots of things. Okay, I have got now to show, um, I've got a couple of giveaways for today and I've got quite a bit of haul. Now it has been a while since I did a video, so you need to take that into account. I know I don't need to justify it and also I've got some of my market purchases as well in this. So let me make a start on some haul and then we'll do the giveaways for today. Let's just grab a little sip of water. Okay, let's start with the first lot of market purchases that I bought. Um, I bought these all from Peakside Needleworks. No, I didn't, I'm telling fibs. I bought them from the Patchwork Rabbit. So the first one, and I still need to track down the companion piece to this, I got the Heartstring Samplery Sting Like a Bee. And of course the companion to this is the Plum Street Samplers Float Like a Butterfly. So I really love this one, love them as a set. We'll have them displayed as a set ultimately. And this is great because it calls for DMC flosses. The next one that I got, and I absolutely fell in love with this the moment I saw it, is like everybody else wanted all the Stacey Nash. And this is the Wonderful Life Pin Cape Drum. So, so pretty. And it's got the It's a Wonderful Life on the back from the film. So beautiful piece to have out. Um, I think you could have this out all winter time, not necessarily just at Christmas. So there's that one. And then there's some little tomato themed things popping in now. I have got the Needle and Flax by Teresa Kogut. And Michelle showed hers, her progress on hers this morning. Mama loves you GB. She's almost finished it, but I haven't even started. Again, this calls for DMC, so will be nice and cost effective to kit up. So there's that one. And 
I have got, I just love this. This is Hands On Designs Tomato Tomato. And that tomato is just the cutest thing ever. But I cannot track down the Aztec red linen at the moment. I keep an eye out for it. It calls for 32 count um, Weeks Dye Works, I think it is Aztec Red. So I need to keep my eyes peeled for that. But how fun is that? And then moving on to a new um, booklet by Blackbird Designs. And this is Crowns and Shields. And I got this one from Patchwork Rabbit also. And this is, it's not really, it's not normally something I would be drawn to, but I really liked this red work version here. And it's actually the same chart that's done in different colorways. Let me just show you a couple of, that's the original there. And also on the, on the back, you can see some of the original and there's quite a lot of detail in this book and information about the original and then there are options to stitch um, this version which is the, the pinky red which is super pretty and then this is in more of a typical blackbird colour palettes hopefully you can see that because I don't want to show you too much of the instructions or the chart it's a nice big chart and there is a gorgeous version with um, that's made into a drum and as you probably all know I'm a bit obsessed with drums I've never made one but just feel at one point in my life I'm just going to be making all the drums so beautiful so that is something that I'm very much looking forward to planning something from the next thing that I receive is I feel like I really need to build up my stash of linens um, got quite a lot of charts always adding to charts but linens I do struggle sometimes to just pull from stash and know that I've got something I haven't actually taken this out of the bag this is from Fabrics by Crafty Kate, and this is the 2023, uh, sorry, March 2023 Fabric of the Month. And I don't think it has a colourway name, but it's a beautiful sky blue. And I've opted for a fat quarter of 36 count linen. And look at that blue. It's the exact colour of the sky out there today. Really, really pretty. Let me just open it up so you can see. And I know these um, fabrics really, when they're hand dyed, they really vary, don't they, between um, different counts and if they're Ada or if they're linen or even weave. It's such a beautiful blue there. So that arrived. And in the spirit of having more of a linen stash, I also joined the Fabric of the Month Club by Vicky at West Green Loft and Vicky's Fabrics. It's the one I'm doing the French sampler on. And Vicky's, um, I love Vicky's packaging. It's always so perfect. So you get a lovely little flat box to cover up my dress. And beautifully packaged in tissue paper inside. It really is like a gift to yourself and I have got inside my lovely linen of the month and I don't know if this has actually got a colourway it's just called April 2023 it's a 36 count fat quarter again let me just unpack it for you to show you it's a gorgeous it's almost like a very very soft terracotta colour. Let me just pop this on the board and hopefully you can see it. It's a Zweigart base. It's coming out not really that colour at all. It is a soft, 
sort of brick colour. Beautifully dyed, beautifully soft. And Vicky also does hand dyed flosses as well, um, which I didn't subscribe to, but very, very kindly Vicky popped um, a skein of the floss in my package as well. And this is called Bud and it's a hand dyed cotton floss. She did start out dyeing some silk flosses, but these in the um, in the clubs are cotton. So you can see that gorgeous floss there. So thank you, Vicky, for sending that little extra. That was really kind of you. So those are my two linens for this month. And then something very exciting happened. And I'll cover as much of the rest of this up but I wanted to show you something and then you'll know why I was so excited. Let me just cover this up, it's got my address on. This arrived and if you know, you know that little goat sticker is from Michelle at Farm Girl, Farm Girl Dry Goods. Um, she's shipping to the UK, her um, shipping rates are really reasonable to ship to us in the UK and of course she had an amazing choice from market so I thought well let's just have a little birthday slash market splurge and that's what I did now these are not all new charts um, a couple are new and a couple are um, older sort of Brenda Gervais ones that I wanted to just get my hands on it's really getting difficult to get hold of them um, here in the UK so the first that I got um, is the only one actually that isn't Brenda Gervais and it's the Scarlet House and it's Try to Mark Well and that was just an absolute must have when I saw that was a market release. The model is stitched on a 40, 40 count linen which might be a bit of a stretch for me. I think I've got some 38 count legacy linen um, that I could use for this but love that perfect for the tomato stitch up sale and another one that's perfect for that sale is the PA Dutch tomato pin keep again by Brenda Gervais I was obsessed with this when I saw it launched I know Brenda wasn't at market but it came out just before market I think absolutely obsessed with it such a beautiful finish so I also added to my order some um, Lady Dot Velveteen, but the colour that I've got is not really, it's not really right. I guess I could change the floss to match this. This is Lady Dot um, Velveteen in the colour Heirloom, which is this gorgeous, rich red. But as you can see, this is much more of an orangey, almost going to a coral. So I could change my floss to match this or I could um, look around. The, um, the velvet was actually by Blackberry Primitives. I'm just reading from the back of the chart. So, but yeah, I could make it work. I could just have a little play around with the flosses. But that was exciting. And again, part of my um, tomato stitch up. I've got another couple of tomato patterns. Then I've got a couple that aren't tomatoes. Um, Justin's like a little bit bemused by this sudden obsession with tomatoes and I said well it's Stitcher's theme and they are really fun and they're making me happy so I'm stitching tomatoes. This one is great fun, this is I Collect, again an oldie but goodie from Brenda Gervais. I love that, I had a rummage through, um, I've got some of Justin's mum's old buttons and separated all this sort of mother of pearl style ones which i think will go really cute on that that's again stitched on 40 count um might have to be 36 in my case it shouldn't make too much of a difference i think at the moment it would finish at it doesn't say oh hang on four and three eighths by four and a quarter so it'll just be fractionally bigger on 36 but love that one i'm going to pop these all in my tomato bag at the end and this one, which is Queen of the Needle, again by Brenda Gervais. And again, that's on a 40 count, so it will have to be switched up or switched down to um, 36 count. So I think it's safe to say I've got quite a few tomato patterns to keep me going for a little while. Uh, the final things that I added to my order 
were The Bells of Christmas, which was released, I think it was last year. It may have been the Christmas before. Just because I love the shape, they're just that, a little bit different. 40, 40 count linen again. Um, and this, I think, is quite an old one. Um, the Cat and the Moon. I just love his little face. I thought it's a really cute little Halloween chart. Is it on 40 count? Yes, it's on 40 count. So, um, it's either that or I need a stronger magnifier or binoculars. So that was my little haul from Michelle at Farm Girl Dry Goods and I'm really impressed and I think I will be back at some point but I need to just, yes, just not get carried away. But it was market so there were so many nice um, charts and, and goodies. It's hard to resist, isn't it? Uh, we have the coronation coming up in a couple of weeks here in the UK and it's a very exciting time. We have um, an extra day's holiday um, and there are some wonderful things in the shops. There's m and have got their wonderful tins of shortbread which I've already eaten. Um, there's just some really lovely things around and of course stitching patterns are emerging and have emerged already. Now I didn't um, actually get my Platinum Jubilee piece finished last year and of course as we know since then sadly um, we lost our queen so I do need to get this piece finished which is this one here and I am going to get it finished that's on a piece of Paula's linen that I do actually have the tag for I think Alfie hasn't actually found that one that's on 32 count linen in sand colourway using DMC flosses and that was a chart from where are we samplers and stitches called jubilee joy so there's that one which i'm going to get finished i'm keeping these all in a little union jack bag that i made and i was about to print out a couple of freebies from hands across the sea and the printer had an absolute fit so i'm going to show you them on my ipad and hopefully you can see them um one is a pattern that was out last year at around about the time well yes it was around the time that we lost the queen and i'm just going to enlarge this and remove the alfie fur from my screen and it's this one here can you see that okay it's a drum it's a free it's reflecting really badly it's a freebie on Hands Across the Seas website. And the top of the drum says, though absent yet beloved, and that's 2022. And then it says, what does it say? I've got a bit of the chart printed. I can tell you what it says around the edges. It's a very shallow, just a little shallow drum. And then it says, God save the queen, long live the king. And it's really sweet. And I think that'll be a nice, um, a really nice, addition to some patriotic um, stitching to mark the coronation there's another one which is a freebie on hands across the sea which is where have I, what have I done with that one and it's this one it's the god save the king one as well so if you pop across to their website you can download both of those as freebie charts right okay i've been waffling on for quite a while let me do today's giveaways and then I will leave you all to get on with your stitching. So I was having a little rummage in my giveaway bag and I've got some things that, well I've got a lovely kit that I was given by Maloka Designs that I am not going to get around to stitching, which I think I should pass on. And I've also got a chart from Lovely List Matthews that I don't think I will get around to stitching either. It hasn't been stitched. So let me start off first with the chart from Liz Matthews, which is Bowerbirds. Gorgeous. This is stitched on Dove Linen from Weeks Dye Works. Uh, uses two skeins of a DMC and it's absolutely beautiful. But I think it's going to be too similar to the French one that I'm doing. So I thought I would pass it on. As I said, it hasn't been stitched. If you would like to win this chart, please use the word bird in your comment down below. And the kit, and if you're um, 
playing along with So Me Sarah's Stitch It, I think it's called Stitch It Up, no, Kit It Up, Get Your Kit On, Get Your Kit On Sal, um, sorry Sarah, Get Your Kit On Sal, she is doing that and people are doing some wonderful things picking up kits that they have so this would be perfect as i mentioned it is from maloka designs it's the mandala lion and it's a stunning piece but i'm not going to get around to stitching it it's got all the dmc flosses it's got ada cloth it's got a needle it's got the chart it's got everything you need and if you love this lion use the word lion in your comment down below now please be a subscriber of my channel um, please like the video and you must be over 18 so that i can ask you for your address and don't use the word giveaway or freebie or anything like that in your comments so good luck i will announce that on the next video so i'm going to have a tidy up now and go and see what my pup's up to and thank you for coming back to see me. I know it's been a long time and if you have come back, I do really appreciate it. So until I see you again, take care.